Okay, brothers and sisters, uh, I would like to say uh, on this Sabbath, uh, all praises be to Ahaya, Bahashim Yeshaya. Let me pause the chat here. We're here on this Sabbath, uh, coming in the end of the Feast of Tabernacles. Tomorrow night will be a Sabbath from sundown to sundown. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for attending uh, our classes. Uh, we'll, you know, and we will not be on tomorrow for the feast, but you can still keep the feast sundown tomorrow, which is the eighth day. All right. Today we'll be going into, and I said we would touch on, and it's long overdue. Who are the Danites today? Who are the tribes of Dan? Now, of course, we're going into a more detailed lesson later on down the line, but we thought that we would give you some of the research that we've went into according to the scriptures so that one can identify Dan today or the tribe of Dan. Now, for those of you who don't understand who might be asking, well, who's Dan? Well, Dan is one of the tribes of the nations of Israel that's, that was actually written of in the Bible, but you really see no trace of them in the New Testament. So the question is why? Why is it that Dan is not written in the New Testament? Let's go to Revelations because people ask us. We have many letters. People ask us, why is it that Dan is not written in the, uh, in the New Testament uh, concerning the 12,000 from each tribe, the elect that will be chosen from each tribe. And they ask for answers and they very rarely have gotten them. Another question that leads some type of, uh, 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 that, that's open to ambiguous teachings is that there's a black, there's some black people or Africans in different parts of Africa, predominantly uh, North Africa, that's claiming to be from the tribes of, uh, of Dan. All right? I think there's some people in Ethiopia claiming to be from the tribe of Dan and claim that they have the Ark of the Covenant. Number one, that African family is not from the tribe of Dan. And number two, they do not have the Ark of the Covenant. All right, but let's start with Revelations because here's the scripture that brings the question uh, uh, to pass or to mind asking, well, where's Dan in the New Testament? Let's read Revelations. Let's start at the seventh chapter in the first verse. Uh, Revelations chapter seven, verse one. Go ahead. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Go ahead. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, hurt not, not the earth, neither the sea, neither the sea, nor the trees, so we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now you've seen in prior lessons, and we did a lesson years ago, uh, on the twelve lost tribes found. And I know you all can find and go look at that video that was uh, filmed years ago. That there will be a hundred and forty four thousand, twelve thousand leaders out of each tribe of all the children of Israel according to Revelations. All right? Now, now keep in mind that while the angels are sealing the elect, you have Gentile religions out there teaching in church that it doesn't matter who, and who the Israelites are. Well, if it didn't matter who the Israelites were, then this seal of 12,000 from each tribe wouldn't be necessary, right? It would not be necessary. So obviously, 
the physical people of Israel matters because the Most High is going to choose leaders from each of those tribes. The problem is the world is not telling you who are these people. By, by what group of people will the Most High pull his leaders out of? It's not going to be just some Christ followers in the church. This is speaking of physical people that fit the description of the 12 tribes of Israel and following Christ and keeping the commandments of the Most High. But let's, let's go further and identify who are these people. Read. Uh, verse 5. Of the tribe of Judah were still 12,000. And in that lesson, the 12 lost tribes found, we identified Judah, which is predominantly the, predominantly the Negro, in America, parts of Brazil, that was brought over in cargo slave ships to North America and different parts of South America. These make up the tribes of Judah. Of course, there's a, millions of us still in the Ivory Coast of Africa as kings and ambassadors in Africa. That's the tribe of Judah, the king tribe. All right. And some of you who might happen on this video and say, well, we thought that Jewish people or Caucasians were the Jews. No, they are in the, they, they are, they, they are Jews, but they're not Jews through bloodline. They are Jews through religion or conversion into a religion called Judaism. Okay, so you cannot become another man's race through conversion. Like, for instance, if I was to become a Roman Catholic today, and I would never do that, that, that pagan satanic religion, but if I was to become Roman Catholic, th that don't change me into a Roman. I am not a Roman because I become a Roman Catholic. Okay, I'm not from the Edomites who created the Roman Catholic Church. So, your ideology does not change your race. So, the people that's being chosen here to lead in Revelation 12 are physical Hebrews. All through the Bible, these are physical Hebrews. These are Israelites according to birth, according to a bloodline, a blood right to the covenant. All right, read. Of the tribe of Judah were still 12,000. Judah is predominantly the so-called Negro in North America. And a lot of them don't know it. They think they're African-American, which is a modern name that was created by Jesse Jackson. Okay. No, you're not African-American. You're not black. You're from the tribe of Judah, according to the Bible. The same tribe Christ came out of. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Reuben were still 12,000. Reuben, you have a small remnant of Re Reuben which are the Seminole Indians, but the majority of Reubenites are in Australia. They're the Aborigines of Australia. 12,000 of them will be chosen to lead. Read. Of the tribe of Gad, we're still 12,000. Gad, who dwell in tents, like it says in Genesis 49. Gad, the North American Indian. Okay. The North American Indian are, Indians are from the tribe of Gad. 12,000 of them will lead. Read. Verse 6. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Asher, it tells you that Asher's foot would be dipped in oil. So these are the oil rich countries in South America. Okay. Uh, like you got the Venezuelans. Parts of Brazil. Okay. Uh, all the way down through Colombia. All these are Asherites according to biblical prophecy they found oil it tell you ashes foot will be dipped in oil okay so Shabazz his family in South America and all those that were lit, led by Shabazz these are Asherites read of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Naphtali were sailed 12,000 Naphtali is the South Pacific people, the people from the Fiji Islands, the Samoans, the Hawaiians, they are from the physical seed of Israel. They just lost their identity, but they're from the physical seed. All right. And I know some people might ask, well, what difference does that make? All right. All people come together in some great melting pot and that's all that matters. No, they have nothing to do with that. Even America itself, which is a... a, a 
a collaboration of all cultures come from original cultures that were lost. All these cultures that melt and mesh together, you still come from an original culture before the new world. All right? So it does matter. All right? We, we weren't meant to operate like all the other people that are just meshing together. The Most High gave us laws, and that's why we felt as a people. Now, I know there is some people out there that may ask, well, where do I fit into this? We'll go into that later. Suppose I can't find out what my ethnicity is. Well, that's fine, too. Just follow Christ. But what we're showing you is detailed prophecy that are concerning a physical people right now. That's what we're teaching about right now. Okay? So this is not excluding anyone from a promise if they're great people and following the commandments of the Most High. You will have your reward. But we're speaking of specific prophecies concerning the people who will rule in this earth according to the Bible. Finish reading. Uh, of the tribe of Manasseh were still 12,000. Manasseh is the Cubans. Okay. Read. Of the tribe of Simeon were still 12,000. Now, all these people that I'm speaking of, that I've spoken of up until this point, have one thing in common. They've, they've all been conquered by the Roman Catholic Church and the Jesuits. They've all been destroyed by the ideology and religion of, that, that came from the West. So, of course, when these people were conquered, they lost the identity of their biblical ties. They lost their biblical ties. And then you had the people who destroyed them who came and told them, well, listen, we're really the people. And that's why I thank the Most High on a sidebar here that we'll be going into that further this coming Wednesday. I think Tex Mars will be on the blog talk again this coming Wednesday. And we had some detailed information in which he started going into showing you that who the real Jews were not, proving who they were not, which are the people that everyone believed are the Jews today. And now he's going to come back and we're going to discuss, well, if they're not the Jews, well, let's do some fact-finding together and identify the true Jews according to the Bible. So we're going to be dealing with that this Wednesday on Blog Talk with Tex Mars. So. And uh, you probably want to be there for that. But we're going to go through a few of these scriptures with him and have him bring some detailed information that that uh, that have been bestowed on him in this short time since our conversation on blog talk over a month ago, about two months ago. So obviously he went into something and did some research based on this conversation and a, a light came on that we'll discuss this coming Wednesday. But go ahead. It says, um, of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Simeon, the Dominicans, 12,000 of them sealed. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Levi are the Haitians who are suffering over there in Haiti. Why? Because Levi was originally, originally responsible for the priesthood of the Most High and led our people astray by going after Baal. So that's why they have suffered a greater curse than the majority of the of the uh, the twelve tribes. The Most High say that He would make them base in Malachi the second chapter, so they can't excel in their own land. And it tell you that Simeon and Levi are brother are brethren in Genesis forty nine, and it tell you that uh, uh, that they're dealing with uh, uh, witchcraft and cruelty. Devices of cruelty in their habitations, which is their witchcraft, to show you that the Dominicans and Levi would be sharing the same landmass at the very end. On Simeon's side, the Dominican Republic, they're dealing with Chango, Santa Maria, witchcraft. On the other side of the island, that's why it says their brethren, Levi, they're dealing with high-level voodoo and witchcraft. See? But the Most High is pulling 12,000 of them out of that witchcraft so they can use their spiritual influence for righteousness like they once did under Moses. Right? Read. Of the tribe of Issachar were still 12,000. Issachar is the so-called Mexicans. And we say so-called Mexicans because there's no such thing as a people called Mexicans. 
the biblical name is Issachar. It tell you that Issachar is a burden couched between two asses, like you see on some of their emblems or on some of their uh, artifacts, where you see someone sleep with a big hat on their head between two donkeys. That represents Issachar. It lets you know that there will be a, a people with a burden of working, of servitude, and that's why they work so hard and not get paid much. That's in Genesis 49. That's Issachar, which are the so-called Mexicans. They're not Mexicans. They're Issacharites. Read on. Of the tribe of Zebulun was still 12,000. Zebulun is your modern-day Panamanians, those that are in Belize and those that are near the Panama Canal. These are predominantly Zebulites from the tribe of Zebulun. Read. Of the tribe of Joseph were still 12,000. Joseph is Ephraim, the so-called Puerto Ricans. They are 12,000 leaders will come out of the Puerto Ricans, the Baliqua Taino Indians. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Benjamin were still 12,000. Benjamin, Jamaicans, West Indies. Those that are in the Isles of the West Indies. These are from the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, like your Maroons and others, who, leaders and priests that were set up there from the tribe of Benjamin. All right, read. Uh, after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all the nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with, with white robes and palms in their hands. Now, as you can see, now it's going to, into the other people from every nation and kindreds and tongues. But not before the Bible distinguished the 12,000 leaders that will be right under the 12 disciples in Christ. Now, some might ask, well, why isn't Dan there? Where is Dan? Dan was one of the sons of Israel. Why aren't they mentioned? And what is their portion or lot for being a child of Israel or a child of Abraham? Why, do not, why, why is it that Dan will not receive leadership like the rest of his brother? That's the question. Well, we're going to show you why Dan will not receive that particular type of leadership. First of all, in order to do that, we must first go into the Bible to show you what was Dan's original, his original portion as a leader of Israel. Like, did he get a portion as a leader? What was his job as one of the sons of Jacob? What was his portion? Let's go there first. So when Israel came out of Egypt, for, for a lot of you don't know, yes, we were in Egypt first. When our four parents came out of Egypt, each of us was assigned a responsibility. But we're speaking specifically on Dan right now. All right. Let's see what scriptures relate to Dan and what was their responsibility in the temple. And it will lead you to understand why Dan is not written of as one of the leaders that will be sealed. Will some of them make it? Absolutely, but they will not make it as leaders like we read in Revelations, the seventh chapter. All right. Read. Uh, Exodus 38 and 21. Exodus 38 and 21. This is the sum of the tabernacle, even the tabernacle of testimony. Go ahead. As it is counted according to the commandment of Moses. For the service of the Levites by the hand of Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest, and Bezaliel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. And with him was Ahaliab, son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a, and a cunning workman, and an embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet and fine linen. So Dan's job at, in the temple was to assist Judah in the construct of the temple. So Dan was supposed to set up the embroider, uh, the embroidered curtains and, and all the embroidery of cloth you might see in a temple of gold and purple. 
That was his job. So Dan had a specific work within the temple with Judah. Judah had to deal with the uh, masonry part of things, all right, and the carpentry side of things, but it was Dan who dressed the temple, right? Read. Uh, verse 24, all the gold that was occupied for the work and all the work of the holy place, even the gold of the offering was 20 and 9 talents, talents and 730 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. After the shekels of the sanctuary. So when you go into this particular chapter, it breaks down the responsibility of those that would create or make this temple. Now this temple wasn't just any temple. It was a facsimile or similitude to the heavenly tabernacle. So that now the tabernacle can be amongst men. The Most High can come down and be amongst the elders and those of Israel and, communi and communicate directly with his people. So that's what this tabernacle, this temple was being made, was a facsimile of what was in heaven. So it had to be spot on, right on point. But the key point that I wanted to bring out is, in specific, the embroideries of Dan, of the tribe of Dan, and the colors of Dan. All right? Now, as we know, and there's many lessons I went into to show you that the northern tribe of Samaria fell. Okay? And that's Ephraim who are the Puerto Ricans today, it was their forefathers who was over the northern kingdom. Now, once the northern kingdom fell, it left a void in which Dan moved out of its position and assumed a higher position outside of what the Most High appointed him. Let's get an attribute of Dan real quick. All right. Let's get Judges 5 and 17 and get an attribute of Dan. Book of Judges 5 and 17. Go ahead. Gilead abode beyond Jordan. Gilead abode beyond Jordan. Read. And why did Dan remain in ships? And why did Dan remain in ships? So that's a clue there. That Dan would operate outside of the borders of Israel. And go on waters opposed to the other tribes. Now what did Dan do with these ships? Where did Dan go in these ships? Is what we'll receive in this lesson today. What would Dan take with him? As far as worships are concerned? We'll figure that out also. Alright? Now. Let's go into Genesis. The 49th chapter. The 16th and the 17th verse concerning the tribe of Dan. Now, after our people went off, the Ephraimites, you had Jeroboam, who, who led our people astray. Which was, if he was living a day, would be a so-called Puerto Rican. Okay? Led our people astray. They went into Assyria for a few years and eventually made their way over the waters with the rest of the ten tribes. So they came over to the Americas. You had some Danites that stayed in the area. And we're going to show you what those Danites did and what that led to. All right. Now, before we go there, let's, let's go to a prophecy concerning Dan. You had Genesis 49 now. This is Jacob speaking to his sons before he go to sleep with his fathers. Before he pass over, he had to lay the prophecies and what the Most High showed him concerning his sons. Also within the lesson, we're going to take some excerpts or read some, part, some portions from the 12 patriarchs. From Dan the father in which he spoke to the son, similar to how Jacob is speaking to them. Okay, now let's see what Israel, Yasha'ala, or Jacob, told Dan concerning the prophecies of his children. Uh, Genesis 49 and 16. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Now, as we all know, 
Dan was never put in a position to judge as one of the tribes of Israel. See, but the key point you have to look in as far as the words are concerned here. Why is it saying as one of the tribes of Israel of Dan, if Dan would be considered one of the tribes? But the key thing is Dan was not placed in a position to judge. He had a specific responsibility in the temple to assist for the building construct of our temple. And if you look at any biblical maps, Dan had the smallest areas allotted to them opposed to the other tribes. So there was no high responsibility out of what the Most High gave them. But they took responsibility and later on became judges fulfilling what Jacob said would happen with his son Dan's children. We're going to go into that in a moment. So it says, Dan shall judge as one of the tribes of Israel, even though the Most High didn't tell him to. Read. Verse 17. Dan shall be a serpent by the way. He shall be a serpent by the way. So we're going to show you that that relates to Dan operating under the spirit of Satan. He, he began to set up temples to these Gentile gods and he began to worship Satan. He became a serpent, by the way. Read. An adder in the path. An adder is not only a serpent, but a, a venomous serpent with poison. He became an adder, which is a venomous serpent. And what? That bite up the horse hills so that, the, so that his rider shall fall backwards. So if you bite the horse's heel and the rider falls backwards, what happens to the rider? The rider falls off the horse. See? So, Dan would be used as a stumbling block that would cause Israel to fall from their high position. And therefore, who would get on the horse and become leaders? Let's go there in Ecclesiastes real quick. Who would become leaders? If an adder bites a an horse and he's and the horse goes up on both of his legs and the rider falls off and Israel is the rider, who gets on the horse? So Dan was used to overthrow Israel. He was used by the Gentile nations to subvert Israel internally and destroy Israel. And as a pretext, the Gentiles began their rule. Listen clearly. Go ahead. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 7. Yes. I have seen servants upon horses. Now it tell you in Ecclesiastes wisdom scriptures that I have seen servants what? Upon horses. Upon horses. Why? Because servants are supposed to be serving those of high stature. If you're on the horse the servants are on the ground. So, it's, so the wisdom scriptures is telling us that this is a phenomenon. He has seen servants upon horses and what? And princes walking as servants upon the earth. He saw princes walking as servants upon the earth. Israel means, the name of Israel, to be a prince of the Most High. So he's seen servants walking on the ground. I mean, he's seen princes, which are the leaders who should be on the horses, walking on the ground as servants and seeing the servants on the horse riding high over the princes of the earth. See? Why? Because Dan, being a serpent, had bit the horse. The horse uh, drew back and threw Israel off and therefore the servants became the leaders. Now they're riding high now. So let's see according to scriptures, what exactly did Dan, the tribe of Dan, do? What did they, what did they do? Let's go there. Let's go here to the book of Judges after Israel fell. Now, mind you, Christ even told us not to go into Samaria or the northern tribes. And, and, and to the northern areas because why they set up Moloch they set up 
uh, 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 temples to Asterisk there. You can read that yourself in 2 Kings 17. But Dan took it even further. Let's go there. Let's go to Judges 18 and 29. So after the tribes left, Dan tried to fill a void as leaders when the Most High did not set them up as leaders. Read it. Uh, this is Judges 18 and 29. We're going straight to it. You can read the whole chapter when you get we get a chance, but we're going straight to it. Judges 18, 29, and 30. Read it. And they called the name of the city Dan. So they went and sacked a, a, a city, destroyed all the people who was at peace through war, and set up their own city that the Most High didn't give them. Right? They murdered, killed, pillaged, and then set up their own city outside of the borders the Most High gave their fathers. Right? Read. Who was born after the name of Dan, their father, who was born unto Israel. Go ahead. Howbeit, the name of the city was Laish at the first. And the children of Dan set up the graven image. The children of Dan set up graven images. Now, mind you, they were known for their artistry and their craftiness and engravements in the temple. Okay. But now they're using their same gifts to do what? To lead Israel astray. See? Read. And the children of Dan set up the graven image. And Jonathan, the son of Gershon, the son of Manasseh, <clears throat> he and his sons were priests of the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. So they started setting up their own priests who were not priests. Manasseh was not supposed to be priest. Levi was priest. And when you read uh, earlier in this particular chapter, uh, uh, Dan actually got the gods that they set up in this particular area from Levi. Because Levi went off. So they went and got these gods and set up these gods in this city after murdering the people. And these particular uh, artifacts they were using, they were conjuring demons, linking with Satan, the whole nine they was doing there. Blaspheming the Most High before men. Right? Read on. And they set up Micah's graven image. And they set up Micah's graven image. Read. Which he had made. And Micah was from the tribe of where? Uh, Levi. From the tribe of Levi. See? So that's Israel going off. Like in serpent in, in the way. Causing Israel to fall backwards by what? Biting the heel of the horse. Now, the prince fall off the horse as a servant, and then the Gentiles become leaders. And it happens all the time. Why do you think even, and I like to minimize things to where you can understand it today. Why do you think that uh, no matter what business you set up out there, brothers and sisters, that they try to tax you to death and put you in jail, but if you set up a church, you don't have to pay taxes. Why? Because you're setting up temples to their gods. This is what makes our people fall backwards in these false practices and religions. Let me tell you, the, the, the Danites were known for this. Setting up temples that have nothing to do with the Most High. And ironically, also, you notice how a lot of these churches have the name Bethel to them. Or you have the Jehovah Witnesses who say, well, our main place is in Bethel. What you don't know is that if you go in 2 Kings and you go into the books of the Old Testament, Bethel was taken away from God's people and you have all type of Gentile gods that were set up in Bethel to worship Aphrodite, uh, Astoreth, all these different gods, Semiramis, Nimrod's mother. Bethel is a place to worship Satan. They don't ever tell you that. Now, you know, Bethel usually means house or a house of God when you translate it. But the house of what God? Now that it's been taken over by the Gentiles. Dan had a hand in this. Okay. You have anything else there, Lloyd? 
I'll so finish up verse uh, 30. Okay. It says, And the children of Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. So Dan became leaders. And they were setting up, they became the judges. Judges mean rulers or leaders over a land. And they did this under the powers of Satan. The Most High had no hand in this. When I say that, they were following Satan. They were totally against the will of the Most High here. They were doing this for their own power, their own greed. Okay? More on Dan. All right, let's get, uh, because we already proved that they will be on waters or with ships, right? Let's hit that real quick again. Judges 5 and 17, and then let's get Ezekiel 27. Uh, Judges 5, 17. Go ahead. Gilead abode beyond Jordan, and why did Dan remain in ships? Why did Dan remain in ships? So where was Dan traveling? Where did Dan go? That's the hundred million dollar question here. That every all the so-called great historians, all the great uh, theologians, they're all saying the same thing. Well, we don't know where Dan is. Well, Dan might be here, or Dan might be there. Okay. It's total ambiguous when you can identify Dan according to scriptures, and we're going to get there in a second. Let's go there. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, the twenty seventh chapter. Uh, Ezekiel 27, verse 19. Go ahead. Dan also and Javan, going to and fro, occupied in thy fairs. Bright iron, cassia, and colonists were in thy market. Now read that again. Dan also and Javan, going to and fro, occupied in thy fairs. Bright iron, cassia, and colonists were in thy market. Was in thy market. So... What was Dan traveling and operating with Javan for? Javan is one of the sons of Japheth. When you translate the word Javan, it's what? It's Greece. So now we have a connection with Dan and the Grecians dealing with merchandise going back and forth to and fro. From that land to Greece. See that? See that? You go into Japan, Genesis 10, it gives you Greece. So now we understand them dealing in, mer in merchandise or merchants with ships where they were traveling. Greece, right? You think that's something? Listen to this here. They begin to set up temples to Satan. I'm going to show you in a moment. Let's go to the first verse in Ezekiel 27. Uh, Ezekiel 27 verse 1. Go ahead. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Now, thou son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyrus. Take up a lamentations for Tyrus. And say unto Tyrus, O thou that art situate at the entry of the sea, which are a merchant of the people for many, many isles. Thus saith the Lord. Power. That's a merchant for the people with many isles. And don't forget, you know that Dan would be doing what? Dealing with ships. On ships. Now back then you didn't have planes. You didn't have no other form of transportation. The major uh, technology to travel and take things abroad was ships. So another name that you would get out there for Dan would be the sea travelers. Or the sea people. That's another name that's out there for them. Wow. Why? Because they predominantly set up on the borders of the Mediterranean Sea as merchants to travel, to take things from one coast to the next. This is how they gain so much power. But listen to this clearly. Going back to the king of Tyrus, which was of Persia at this time. Read. Which are a merchant of the people for many isles. For many isles. Thus saith the Lord Power. O Tyrus, O Tyrus, thou hast said, I am of perfect beauty. He said he was of perfect beauty. Thy borders are in the midst of thy of the seas. Thy builders have perfected thy beauty. They have made all thy all thy ships, 
all by shipboards of fir trees of Sinir. Now let's see who's it really speaking of. Is it speaking of the king of Tyrus or a spirit that's controlling Tyrus? Let's see who this is really speaking of. Let's go one chapter over. 28, because it says his... Let's go back to where it talks about his beauty again. Read that again. Uh, this is the end of verse 3. Yes. Thus saith the Lord Power, O Tyrus, thou hast said, I am a perfect beauty. I am a perfect beauty. So who is he speaking of here? Who's controlling the merchants and the ships here? Let's see. Go ahead. Ezekiel 28, 11 through 12. Go ahead. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man. Son of man. Take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord Power, Thou sellest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Perfect in beauty. The same thing you read in Ezekiel 27, read. Uh, 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of the Most High. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of the Most High. Now we know the king of Persia wasn't in the garden of Eden, but who was in the garden? You got it. The serpent. So who's controlling the government or the king of Tyrus there? That's Satan himself. Controlling the world through commerce. And who's right there? Dan. Being an adder and a serpent against his own people. See? He didn't set up temples to Satan. And he's now being a merchant. Trading and all that. Getting his glory. Now, not that our people wasn't involved in trading and all that. You have to do that to survive. But Dan at this time was a key cog in the machine for Satan. Okay? Now, we, we already gave you the Javan Dan connection, which is the Greek Dan connection. Now, let's go into the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha. And we will use the annotated Apocrypha also strictly for translation. All right. Maccabees, the 12th chapter. First Maccabees, chapter 12, verse 1. Read. Now when Jonathan saw that the time served him, he chose certain men and sent them to Rome for to confirm the new to confirm and renew the friendship that they had with them. Now we're talking about probably around around 40 BC around that time. The time period now. Way from the time that that Dan was set up here. Okay, you're talking about anywhere between the Grecian Empire was about 33 333 BC. And you got you got the Roman Empire somewhere around between 150, excuse me, about one about 140, 130 BC of the Roman Empire. Let's read it. Uh, he sent letters also to the lace of the Monians and to other places for the same purpose. Go ahead. So he they, sent letters to who? The lace of the Monians. The lace of the Monians. And to other places for the same purpose. So they went unto Rome and entered into the Senate and said, Jonathan the high priest and the people of the Jews sent us unto you to the end. Ye should renew the friendship which ye have with them in league as in the former time. Go ahead. Uh, verse 4. Upon this, Go ahead. Uh, the Romans gave them letters unto the governors of every place that they should bring them into the land of Judea peaceably. And this is the copy of the letters which Jonathan wrote to the Lacedaemonians. Jonathan the high priest and the elders of the nation and the priest and the other people of the Jews unto the Lacedaemonians, their brethren, send greeting. So you got Jonathan writing letters to the Lacedaemonians. Now, you, a lot of you might not be able to relate to this at first, but we're going to show you who the Lacedaemonians are. You understand? Who are these people... The Lacedaemonians, according to scriptures. Why is the Hebrews writing them? And this also tells us that the Romans, the Edomites, know who they are too. I'm going to show you. Read. There were letters sent in times past unto Onias the high priest from Darius, 
who reign then among you to signify that ye are our brethren. You are our what? That ye are our brethren. So Jonathan was writing letters saying that the Laodicemonians were the brethren of the Jews, of the Israelites. Right? Read. As the copy here underwritten do have specified, at which time Onias entreated the ambassador that was sent honorably and received the letters wherein declaration was made of the league of and friendship. Therefore we also, albeit, we need none of these things, for we have the holy books of Scripture in our hands to comfort us. So we have the Bible. See? Read. To have, nev have nevertheless attempted to send unto you for the renewing of our brotherhood and friendship, lest we should become strangers unto you altogether. So this is Jews, Israelites, writing letters to their brethren, the Lacedonians, which are, you're going to find out, in Greece, saying that we have to extend our hand to you because if we don't do this, eventually we're going to forget that you are our brother. So we're trying to reach out to you. Now this is our people writing letters to the Lacedonians in Greece. But we're going to show you in a moment who these Lacedonians are. Read. Lest we should become strangers unto you altogether. For there is a long time past since ye, seen, since ye sent unto us. We therefore at all times without ceasing both in our feast and, our, and other convenient days do remember you in the sacrifices which we offer, and in our prayers as reason is, and as it becometh us to think upon our brethren. And we are right glad of your honor as for ourselves. We have had great troubles and wars on every side. Go ahead. For, for so much as the kings that are, round, that are round about us have fought against us, how be it, we would not be troublesome unto you, nor to others of our confederates and friends in these wars. For we have help from heaven that secureth us, so as we are delivered from our enemies, and our enemies are brought underfoot. For this cause we chose Numenius, the son of Antiochus, and Antipater the son of Jason, and sent them unto the Romans to renew the amity that we had with them and the former league. We commanded them also to go unto you and to salute you and to deliver you our letters concerning the renewing of our brotherhood. Wherefore now ye shall, ye shall do well to give us an answer thereto. And this is the copy of the letters which Onaris sent. Arius king of the Lacedaemonians, to Onias the high priest greeting. It is found in the writing that the Lacedaemonians, it is found in writing, it is found in writing, that the Lacedaemonians and Jews are brethren. That the Lacedaemonians and Jews are brethren. How did the Lacedaemonians get over into Greece? You got it. Dan's connection with the ships operating outside of the borders of Israel. Now listen to this clearly. I need you to read the same thing in the Cambridge Annotated Apocrypha. Read that. Uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 12 verse 21. It has been found in writing concerning the Spartans. It has been found in writing concerning the Spartans. And the Jews that they are brothers. And the Jews that they are brothers. And the translation annotated which brings it into the regular English. The Lacedaemonians are the Spartans. The Spartans are from the tribe of Dan. They got there through ships. That's how they got to Greece. Traveling to and fro with Javan, which is one of the sons or names of Greece. So when you look at that movie 300, it's not speaking of Europeans. Okay, it's speaking of, you got it, the children of Israel. It's speaking of the tribe of Dan. Now later on down the line, there was a schism between Dan and the Romans. Okay, they were, they were all following paganism. Okay, the Danites over in certain areas follow what? Aphrodite, Hermes. Zeus. So these are all the gods 
that Dan set up way back when and continued to follow those gods in Greece, the fallen angels. They set up in Cyprus, they set up in different areas, but the Spartans in particular, the movie 300 is speaking of them. Okay, now, the Spartans, listen to this clearly, and the Danites are usually on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Now, the Roman Catholic Church tried to throw it off with books like the Holy Grail when it comes to what they call the Merovingian bloodline. The Merovingian bloodline have nothing to do with Christ having a child with Mary Magdalene. The Merovingian bloodline is linking directly to Dan, who's at war with the Roman Catholic Church because the Romans double-crossed it. All right? They thought they would rule with the Gentiles when they're being destroyed by the Romans also. You see what's going on in Cyprus and different parts of Greece and all that. They're being taken down too. Now, through the Bible speaks of our people reaching out to them. The Apocrypha did here, and there's more. Let's get the, the ones we have in Acts real quick. So they went off, set up temples to Satan, followed Zeus. You understand? caused our people to go astray and therefore they will not be considered as one of the leaders based on their actions with the Gentiles against the 12 tribes of Israel. Now before I go into the the the, uh, the books of the Acts of the Apostles first, let's go to the 12 patriarchs and hear Dan's testimony. Uh, this is uh, first uh, Testament of the 12 patriarchs chapter 5 verse 5. And whensoever ye depart from the Lord, ye shall walk in all evil and work the abominations of the Gentiles. And he said, he told them that your sons, my sons, you're going to go off and begin to do what? Ye shall go off, uh, ye shall walk in all evil and, and work the abominations of the Gentiles. You will start dealing with the abominations of the Gentiles. Dan, their father, told them. Read. Going a whoring after women of the lawless ones. And you're going to begin to deal with women of the lawless ones. And these women turn their hearts to satanic gods. Read. While with all wickedness and spirits of wickedness work in you, which I have, for I have read in the book of Enoch, the righteous, that your prince is Satan, and that all the spirits of wickedness and pride will conspire to attend constantly on the sons of Levi. And it tells you, that even the 12 patriarchs were reading out of the words of the righteous Enoch. That Dan's children's leader would eventually become Satan. A serpent that will bite the horse and make the rider fall backward. Yes, that was our brother Dan. Read. To cause them to sin before the Lord. To cause them to sin before the Most High, read. And my sons will draw near to Levi. And my sons will draw near, near to Levi. As we read earlier in the book of Judges, when you read up, they received the gods from Micah, which was a Levite. Those same gods were set up in the northern kingdom and led our people astray. And you would never believe the chief god that was set up, which were the calf, it links to the Tetragrammaton or Yahweh. They've always led our people astray with the same god that was made coming out of Egypt. Read. Of verse 7. And my sons will draw near to Levi and sin with them in all things. And the sons of Judah will be, will be covered to us. It says, now, look what it says concerning the tribe of Judah. Will be covered to us, this read. Plundering other men's goods Taking like Taking other people's goods like lions, read. Therefore ye, shall ye be led away with them into captivity. Go ahead. And there shall ye receive all the plagues of Egypt and all the evils of the Gentiles. To show you that even though, even though they will suffer some of the curses of us, 
they will still not receive the leadership position. Listen to this clearly. Let's go down to the seventh chapter to prove that. Uh, 7 verse 3. Go ahead. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, Dan prophesied unto them that they should forget their God. So Dan told their sons that they will forget their God, the God of the Hebrews. And should be alienated from the land of their inheritance. And shall be alienated from the land of their inheritance. And from the race of Israel. And from the race of Israel. And from the family of their seed. And from the family of their seed. So, according to Dan, their father, out of his own mouth, his children will no longer be considered Israelites. They will be Gentiles, separated from the race of Israel. You understand? Read on. Okay, now, real quick. Let's show you the disciples going to some of the areas looking to convert them back into the truth, but not as Israelites, as Gentiles. You got that, Nats? Let's go to Acts, the 13th chapter. It's showing you the disciples traveling into the same areas Dan went to. Acts 13 and 4. Uh, Acts 13 and 4. So they being brought forth by the Holy Spirit, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence sailed to Cyprus. So you have the, the disciples selling to Cyprus, or Kittim, according to scriptures, which is actually a province of Greece. And when you go into the sea people, the land of Cyprus was a key point of emphasis for the tribe of Dan. Okay? Cyprus or Kittim, the people of Cyprus are from the tribes of Dan. And those that are on the coast of the Mediterranean, the majority of them set up, are from the tribes of Dan. And that's till this day. All right, but I'm just showing you, when you look at Cyprus, another land in which our people went into, that, that the disciples were traveling to through ships. Okay, now we have some detailed information, some secular information that we'll go into at a later date to show you how Dan got to Cyprus and other areas. But I really wanted to focus today on why Dan is no longer part of the 12 tribes of Israel. According to not only the scriptures, but the testament of their father. So that's why they're not written in Revelations, the seventh chapter. All right. Probably more detailed information, which breaks down when you read the scriptures. There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Gives a whole other understanding there too, because our people were in Grecia. Okay, not only the Jews, but also the tribe of Dan. So I hope. That put some insight, gave you some biblical insight on Dan today. Now, I have to do some further research, but I wanted to give you what we have studied up until this point, just the biblical aspect of why Dan is no longer considered one of the tribes of Israel. But if they come back to Christ and follow the law, statutes, and commandments, they can get into the kingdom, but as Gentiles. Okay?